All right, so this is Testing for Corrosion and Concrete by Chad Staffolino. I want to give a special thanks to Mark Fiddle and Hope Hall for helping me uh, perform this research. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about corrosion and concrete, um, the half cell potential test, uh, some of the testing that we performed here at the Burt Cooper Lab, and then I'm going to go over some results and discussions. So now let's talk about corrosion and concrete. So how does corrosion happen on the rebar that's inside concrete? Well, corrosion needs four things, metal, oxygen, electron transfer, and water. All four of these things are present inside of your concrete. Now, let's rewind a little bit. Rebar is placed inside of concrete because rebar is extremely good in tension. Concrete is not. Concrete is really good in compression. So when you have corrosion on your rebar, your tension strength actually weakens. But the good thing is concrete naturally has what is called a passive layer. It's protection against corrosion. As long as the passive layer is there, your rebar will not corrode. The problem is when too many chlorides get into your concrete, you start to see a breakdown of the passive layer. This will lead to corrosion and pitting in certain areas, and this is not good. If you would like to learn uh, more information about corrosion, Dr. Tyler Lay has a video on YouTube about it that I have linked at the bottom of this page. Okay, now let's talk about how do people uh, test for corrosion in concrete. And so one test that is uh, very popular is called the half cell potential test. And this test basically can help you predict the corrosion by giving you a, uh, a voltage. So you have a probe that has a copper sulfate solution in it and it also has a copper uh, a little copper probe and at the end of this probe is a uh, porous sponge and the porous sponge is actually what you stick on the concrete so you connect this probe to um, a voltmeter and then you put the voltmeter on your concrete over the rebar and so what it's actually looking for is how fast the electrons are moving through your concrete and your rebar the faster they're moving, the more likelihood that you are going to have corrosion. And so a typical number that is used is uh, negative 350 uh, millivolts. That means you likely have corrosion. Anything less than negative, negative 350 millivolts. Anything greater than negative 350 millivolts, likely no corrosion. If you want to learn more about the actual test procedure for the half cell potential test, I have linked a YouTube video at the bottom of this page. Okay, so here at the Burke Cooper Lab, we actually performed our own half cell potential test on two different mixes. Um, and so the two mixes that we used was uh, 0.45 water cement ratio with a class F fly ash, and then we also used a 0.55 water cement ratio with no fly ash whatsoever. Um, and so we mixed the two mixes and we placed um, each mix into a shoebox and we put number four rebars in the shoeboxes. Um, with the 0.45 water cement ratio we had approximately two inches of cover and with the 0.55 water cement ratio we had a quarter inch of cover. We then waited um, until the concrete cured and hardened and then we used caulking to seal the edges. The reason we sealed the edges was because we then ponded uh, the top of the concrete with a calcium chloride solution. And what that's doing is that is inducing uh, chlorides into our concrete, which will in turn induce corrosion, which is what we were trying to do. And we're trying to uh, develop a graph to see if we can predict corrosion in any of the samples. Okay, the testing procedure goes as follows. The ponded samples were kept in a dry, temperature-controlled environment. The samples were tested every seven days using the half-cell potential test. The calcium chloride was poured off before every test, and then after we tested, we reponded the samples. Now, how we actually um, obtained the voltages is we took the probe and we placed them on every point. As you can see from the picture on the bottom left, we have a point over each rebar. We have five points over each rebar. And so they're approximately two inches apart and we would place the probe on each point and then record the voltage at that point. 
um, and then the results were saved and compiled into Excel. So here is the um, results that we saw from the end of the test. And so as we can see with the gray and yellow line, the 0.45 mixes, they stayed relatively the same at about negative 100 for the first 35 days. Um, there was no change, there was no drop, they really stayed the same. Um, and then as we can see from the 0.55 mix, they tended to drop. Now, as you'll notice, we had a spike up. Uh, we believe that we actually did some testing wrong here, but the spike up um, can just be ignored. And then I've put dashed lines, um, guessing approximately where it would have been. And as you can see, it, it's trending down. Now, what's really interesting is after 35 days, we put the samples into an oven. And what that did is it kind of opened everything up. Everything expands. Uh, the pores get a little bit bigger. And as you can see with our 0.45 mix, they drop significantly um, in seven days after being in the oven. And they drop to a certain point, and then they started to level out again. But we have the same trend with the 0.55 mix. They just continue to drop, continue to drop. And if, based on this graph, if I were looking at it, I would have guessed that the 0.45 mix did not have corrosion, and the 0.55 mix did in fact have corrosion. So after 49 days, we decided to bust open the concrete samples and look at the rebar ourselves. So here is a picture of the 0.45 water cement ratio uh, mix and the rebar that was inside of it. If you notice in the picture, you will see a film over the rebar. That is the passive layer. That is what was protecting the rebar against corrosion. Um, it actually holds true that our, um, to our graph as well. We were getting um, higher millivolt readings, and so we predicted that there would not be corrosion, and our prediction ended up being correct. The 0.55 water cement ratio is a different story. We, are, we busted it open and we started to see black rust. Now black rust is an expansive material. It's about two times the volume of the iron itself. So we're looking at it and we see, we, we see the black rust in a couple different spots and we also see the passive layer. This is telling us that electron transfer is actually causing pitting corrosion in certain areas. This is really interesting because if you remember from the graph, we actually had a lower voltage reading in these areas. So our prediction that corrosion was happening was correct. And so this is just a close-up view of the corrosion. Uh, you can see the black rust starting to form. Um, my guess is that if we'd have left it in there for another couple of weeks, it would have turned into red rust, which is three to four times larger than black rust or uh, more volume than black rust. Okay, so now we are looking at a comparison between the 0.45 mix and the 0.55 mix. If you look at the 0.45 mix on the bottom, you see that even passive layer. Uh, there's no corrosion. The iron hydroxide is wrapped around the concrete, protecting it from corrosion. Um, and then we examine the 0.55 water cement ratio mix, and you do you do see the black rust. You see the damage that corrosion is starting to happen. So with the 0.55 mix, we're already seeing some strength loss more than likely if this was in a structure. And so why is this happening? Why are we getting corrosion in the 0.55 mix, but not in the 0.45 mix? Well, first and foremost, uh, cover. We had two inches of cover in the 0.45 mix. This means that the chlorides had to travel further in order to break down the passive layer. Also, the 0.45 mix had, um, one, a lower water cement ratio, and two, it had a class F fly ash, which means it's going to have that tighter microstructure than the 0.55 mix. The tighter microstructure is going to allow um, the hydration products to actually have smaller pores, and thus you get less uh, permeability than the 0.55 mix. From the results, we can conclude that our assumption was correct, that the 0.55 mix had corrosion based on our half cell potential test. And finally, I would like to thank Dr. Tyler Lay for letting us use 
um, the lab and letting us use all the materials. I also want to thank Dr. Julie Hartel for letting us use her half cell potential test. Thank you. Have a good night.